everyone, Max Gullickson with Southbridge Community Television, and here we are again at another one of the wonderful events that Margaret Morrissey and her staff here at the library put on. Tonight we have the author Benjamin Goldfarb. Hi, Ben. How are you? Hey, good. How are you doing, Max? Good to see you. Thanks. Um, ben is the author of this book, Eager, The Surprising Secret Life of Beavers and Why They Matter. Ben, before we get into the book, let me ask you, where did you grow up? Yeah, I grew up in, in Hastings on Hudson, New York, uh, but I'm, I'm a Mets fan, not a Yankees fan, so we <laughs> share a common, a common enemy. Uh, and uh, I, lived, I lived in uh, Amherst and Northampton for about four years, so uh -huh. I, feel, I feel like a bit of a local. Uh -huh. that, so you were out here for school, were you? I was, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh -huh. So what were you first? Were you an environmentalist first or, an, or a writer? Yeah, I think I think that the, those those two things grew in me. I think I consider myself a, a, an environmentalist first and foremost. Mm -hmm. I, I write about nature because I care about nature, mm -hmm. and, and you know this book um, is in some ways a, a mission statement. It's a mm -hmm. it's a call to action for, uh, for for beaver lovers around the country. But mm -hmm. yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm both I'm both those things. Mm -hmm. So they and they came together. I mean, being a writer was very handy for you to spread your message about the importance of beaver and the environment. Yeah, ex exactly. You know, I, I, I've always cared about nature and, and ecology and, and wildlife and conservation and, and uh, you know I, I figured I should apply whatever writing talent I have to the cause that I care about. That's pretty much what you write about isn't it? Yeah exactly, exactly. I cover wildlife conservation for the most part. Ben what is a beaver believer? Oh man, a, a beaver believer. We're, we're a small but uh, powerful and, and growing community of people uh, who basically feel like so many of our, of our nation's environmental problems from water pollution to drought to floods to biodiversity loss, these problems can be at least partly addressed by restoring beavers to our, our, our rivers and streams and lakes and ponds and letting them create this fantastic habitat and improve our water quality and uh, yeah, begin to tackle some of the really pressing problems that are facing us. So we're so a beaver believer basically, you know, we just we're just putting our faith in this really wonderful, miraculous rodent. And it can feel kind of um, cult like at, at mm -hmm. times, but you know, then you actually read the scientific literature and you realize that all of the you know, all of the wonderful beaver benefits that I talk about in this book are actually based in you know in peer-reviewed scientific literature you know it, it seems kind of crazy when you first start talking about how powerful and important beavers are but then you realize that it's all it's all factual mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now when you say restored now go back to say 1500 when yeah. the very first settlers are getting here any idea what the beaver population in North America was at that time to restore to? Yeah, no, it's a it's a it's a great question. We don't you know we don't we don't really know the answer, but but we do know that there were as many as 400 million beavers wow. uh, in in North America, and and certainly there were hundreds of millions of acres more of, of pond and wetland and stream habitat thanks to those amazing animals before we trapped them out for the fur trade. Mm -hmm. Fur trade is what did them in. Exactly. Yeah, they, you know they their fur makes uh, great hats, and that was their that was their downfall. Mm -hmm. How low did the population of beavers go? Yeah, by, by 1900 it was down to about 100,000 or so, mm -hmm. and beavers were completely completely wiped out of, of uh, almost almost all of New England and certainly all of the southeast and the Midwest. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, most of those 100,000 were up in Canada, mm -hmm. very few in the lower 48. Mm -hmm. well, they're back now. How many are there now? Any rough estimates on that? The population of beavers in North America now? Yeah, you know that nobody nobody really knows, but uh, you know the best estimate is about 15 million, and uh, here in Massachusetts there are probably 70,000 or so. So they're 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 doing pretty well, and they're really one of our great wildlife success stories. You know, we pushed them to the brink of extinction, and they they came back. They bounced back. Yeah. Well, so in 1500 there were probably. I don't know, about 15 million humans total in North America, and, and now it's about opposite. You've got 400 million humans right. and 15 million. Can beavers and humans, both dam builders and both adjusters of their environment in a big way, can they coexist in America? Or in the world? Yeah, I, I certainly think so. You know, despite being a, a beaver believer, I'm not naive about what a pain in the butt beavers can be, right? Mm -hmm. They clog up culverts and they flood people's property and they cut down trees. Uh, but there are ways of dealing with those problems without killing the offending animals in many cases. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I, I really believe that our future has to be connected to beavers in some way. Again, we have all of these really pressing environmental problems that we face mm -hmm. that are beyond our our ability as 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 humans, mm -hmm. uh, and they're certainly beyond our, our financial ability to fix all of the all of the issues we're facing. And mm -hmm. you know, we can really accomplish a lot mm -hmm. um, of, of ecological restoration by turning our future over, at least partly, mm -hmm. to this this amazing dam building, water storing, wetland creating ecosystem engineer.
And I think I think there are so many places in this country and this state um, where that we have an opportunity to, to bring these animals back. Mm-hmm. Ben, is there a place folks want to interest in your book, learn, learn more about this? Is there a website that you have they can visit? Yeah, so so uh, bengoldfarb.com is my, my personal website. And I also want to put in a plug for uh, a, a, a site, a nonprofit called the Beaver Institute, mm-hmm. um, which is run by a guy named Matt, Mike Callahan, who's kind of a, a world-renowned beaver coexistence expert. Mm-hmm. And he lives in Southampton, Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Beaver Institute is his his website for resources about beavers. Mm-hmm. So you check out the Beaver Institute. So two different places you can find out about this uh, interesting subject. Folks, there you go. We have the author of Ben Goldfarb, who's agreed to speak to us. And he's got eager... The Surprising Secret Life of Beavers and Why They Matter here at the uh, Jacob Edwards Library, a full presentation. And if you're interested in this subject, this uh, humorous and insightful book is available to you, I'm certain, from the author. And we encourage you to visit his website. Ben, thanks for talking to us. Thanks a lot, Max. That was fun. All right. We'll see you again on Southbridge Community Television next time. This is Max Gullickson signing out. Thanks, Ben. Thank you, Max. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good show, too. I appreciate it.